WLW Cincinnati. It's five o'clock and time for the latest news from WLW Communications Exchange. President Kennedy will visit that rare thing, a Republican city in the South, on Friday. Dallas has turned to the GOP in recent years, but the city is important in Mr. Kennedy's plans for next year, since he carried Texas by only 43,000 votes in 1960. Thursday, the president visited San Antonio, where the reception was warm, and Houston, where it was not so warm. He's spending the night in Fort Worth. A lawyer for James Hoffa says he'll appeal a ruling that bars him from practicing in a federal court in Nashville, Tennessee. The lawyer, Z.T. Osborne, was barred from the court when two judges ruled that he tried to bribe the jury in a Hoffa case coming up. The judges said Osborne admitted offering the bribe through a middleman, but Osborne asked the public to reserve judgment until he appeals. He also said the Teamsters president had nothing to do with the alleged bribe. The threat of a nationwide railroad strike is back now. The sleeping car porters... As I see where the Roman Catholics at the lunch for the president in Dallas, Texas today had a dispensation to eat sirloin steak, although it's Friday. A church spokesman said the president didn't need one. The Diocese of Fort Worth and Dallas granted the dispensation since most of the crowd expected at the trademark for the lunches are non-Catholic. A spokesman said that the president didn't need the dispensation since he's commander-in-chief of the armed forces and church laws of fast and abstinence do not apply to the military. Plans to feed the president the biggest, juiciest steak in Texas fell through, though. Secret Service said that it'll choose the president's steak for him at random from the 2,000 that are cooked. This is a customary precaution wherever the president dines at public gatherings. 570 Radio in Fort Worth, WBAP. Here is Morning Edition, complete news and weather coverage combining authoritative sources of WBAP and ABC. Brought to you by your 30 conveniently located Buddy's Supermarkets, where your dollar buys more. And with every purchase, you get valuable Scotty saving stamps. Now, Morning Edition, Section 1. Good morning, everyone. This is Norwood McClendon reporting. Fort Worth temperature 56 degrees, Dallas 55, skies are cloudy, and very light rain is reported at both cities. President and Mrs. Kennedy arrived in Fort Worth from Houston late last night to an enthusiastic reception from huge crowds and spent the night in Suite 850 at Hotel Texas downtown. The president scheduled two speeches in Fort Worth this morning, the first to the general public, the other at a Chamber of Commerce breakfast. For WBAP News, here is Jack Brown reporting from Hotel Texas. There's a light rain falling in downtown Fort Worth, and that may cut down on the size of the turnout for President Kennedy's parking lot speech. Mr. Kennedy is scheduled to make a short public talk, maybe 10 minutes, at 8.50 this morning. Indications are he will make the speech, even if it's raining. It's still not known whether or not the First Lady will accompany the President to the parking lot, which is just south of the hotel. Mr. Kennedy will speak from a platform mounted on a truck. The hotel's marquee says, Welcome, Mr. President, and under it stand six young co-eds from Carter Riverside High School. The girls got up at 3.30 this morning and arrived at the hotel at 5. They've been standing there ever since. A crowd already has gathered outside the hotel's grand ballroom, maybe 200 persons, and they seem to be concerned about finding seats or at least finding some good ones. The president's ballroom speech, which was an early sellout, will begin shortly after 9.00. We don't know what he'll talk about. From here, Mr. Kennedy will motorcade to Carswell Air Force Base, where Air Force One will be waiting to fly him to Dallas Love Field. 6,000 persons greeted Mr. Kennedy when he arrived at Carswell last night. Hundreds more lined the route to the Texas Hotel, and about 4,000 persons were waiting for him at the hotel. All were cheering. The president said his reception was wonderful. This is Jack Brown reporting from the Grand Ballroom at the Texas Hotel. In San Antonio, Mr. Kennedy made a strong plea for an undiluted space program as he dedicated facilities at the School of Aerospace Medicine at Brooks Air Force Base. Later, he told an audience at a Houston appreciation dinner for Congressman Albert Thomas that Thomas, seeking re-election to a 15th term despite spinal cancer, is one of the nation's most remarkable congressmen. Mrs. Kennedy is proving an able campaigner as she charms the crowds with her smile, handshakes, and pleasantries. Last night, the First Lady addressed a Houston group of Latin American citizens in Spanish, telling them 
I'm very happy to be in the great state of Texas. I'm especially happy to be with you, who are part of the great Spanish tradition, which has contributed so much to Texas. Mrs. Kennedy is visiting the state for the first time. For President Kennedy's public speech this morning, the public is asked to enter the parking lot from 9th Street. No cars will be permitted on the lot itself. Police Chief Hightower says that 8th Street will be blocked off between Main and Commerce and that those streets plus 9th will be stopped to traffic if the crowd overflows into them. The President is expected to speak for about 10 minutes at the outside gathering and about twice as long at the breakfast. State Democratic leaders say they hope to announce a sellout crowd for a hundred dollar a plate dinner honoring Mr. Kennedy in Austin tonight. This is the only announced political function of the President's Texas tour. Governor Conley said yesterday ticket sales have far exceeded his earlier prediction of twenty five hundred, and officials at Municipal Auditorium at Austin say four thousand is about the maximum capacity for a sit down dinner. Speaking there will be the President, Vice President Johnson, and Governor Connolly. Ten minutes past seven o'clock and 570 presents Southwest Weather with WBAP meteorologist Frank McHenry. Good morning, Mac. Good morning, everyone. In the weather news this morning, we have a low-pressure area extending from the west side of the Great Lakes down through Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas into Old Mexico. Associated with this low-pressure area, a cold front running from west of Duluth, down through the vicinity of Omaha, Nebraska, southwestward to cross Kansas, clear down into the Panhandle just south of Dalhart, and curves back to the northwest along the Rockies in Colorado. Preceding that cold front moving in from the north is a cold-type occlusion moving through East Texas at the present time. This front is past Dallas, east of Dallas, east of Fort Worth, extends on down to near San Antonio, swings southwestward into a low pressure center in Old Mexico. As the front continues moving eastward today, the present shower activity will dissipate and the clearing trend will set in with the winds coming from the west and later from the northwest. Farther to the west, we have a high pressure area building in over Nevada. And as that high builds and the low pressure area moves out, we will have improving conditions tomorrow. Let's pause now to hear this message. This is a direct appeal to more than 130,000 leading gas stations that proudly display the familiar bright yellow ANCO windshield wiper service cabinet. And it may interest you, too. Highway authorities now are convinced that about 7 out of 10 cars in America have dead wiper blades that can't stop streaking. Streaking dims vision, causes eye strain, forces abnormal traffic slowdown. Authorities claim that you, at the gas pump, can do most to correct this serious drag on storm traffic. So please help relieve much time-wasting, fender-bending traffic congestion. As each car comes up for gas, simply have ready the pair of fresh, new Anco wiper blades or refills that the car needs for clear vision. Hand them to the driver with their box. Let him look at them while you service the car. Then tell the driver you can install them in mere seconds. Time-saving, nerve-resting ANCO service brings car owners back for more, makes your boss happier, makes your job a better one. It's snowing in Kansas in the northwest cor corner of the state, also in Nebraska and parts of Colorado. The cold air moving southward will affect us in about 20 to 24 hours. Let's check now some of the temperatures and weather across the state. El Paso clear and 42, Wink clear 46, Lubbock high scattered and 43, Mineral Wells broken clouds at 2,000 feet, rain shower activity, temperature 53. Greater Southwest has broken clouds with very light rain, temperature 56. Dallas has overcast, uh, very light rain, temperature 55. San Antonio overcast, temperature 59. Austin has a rain shower, temperature 58. College Station is overcast with uh, one and a half miles visibility with a heavy rain shower, temperature 52. Corpus Christi, high broken clouds, temperature 76. Brownsville, high scattered clouds, temperature 
75 degrees. Now for the forecast. Mostly cloudy and cooler today and tonight, partly cloudy and mild Saturday. Scattered showers today and early tonight. High both days in the upper 60s, the low tonight in the mid 40s. The wind northwesterly 10 to 20 miles per hour, diminishing tonight, light and variable on Saturday. This is Frank McHenry saying have a nice day. Thank you, Mac. Each morning, Monday through Saturday, hear Southwest weather. And now stay tuned for Don Gardner. At 7.15 at the tone, here's Morning Edition, Section 3. News around the world with Don Gardner, brought to you by Winston Cigarettes. Changing to a filter cigarette, change to Winston. Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Now here is Don Gardner. Good morning from ABC News, New York. The Russians have finally answered a U.S. protest note of more than two weeks ago concerning blockades on the Berlin Autobahn. As expected, the Soviets turned down the protest, said they'll continue to make the rules on the Autobahn, and the Russians accused the U.S. of artificially provoking the Autobahn incidents. President Kennedy's job in Texas to patch up the Democratic Party. The job in its second day, three more speeches on tap, Fort Worth, Dallas, Austin. ABC microphones are with the president and on hand last evening in San Antonio when President Kennedy spoke of success in our space program. Whatever the difficulties, they will be overcome. Whatever the hazards, they must be guarded against. I think the United States should be a leader. A country as rich and powerful as this, which bears so many burdens and responsibilities, which has so many opportunities, should be second to none. The First Lady is also along on this Texas trip, and from all reports, she's making quite a hit with the Texans. More news in just a moment. Thinking of changing to a filter cigarette? Well, if you're thinking of changing to a filter cigarette, make it Winston. Change into a filter cigarette, change to Winston. Because Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Change to America's largest selling filter cigarette, Winston. No truer words ever spoken or sung. They tell you why, of all filter cigarettes, Winston is America's largest selling by far. Smoke Winston. Now back to the news. The Russian diplomatic exodus from the Congo is underway. One Russian diplomat arrived in Brussels this morning. Reportedly, he was barefoot. The Congolese hustled the Russian out of the country so fast he didn't have time to get all his clothing. The Congo is expelling the entire Russian mission. The CIA will be downgraded in the fight against communists in South Vietnam. This exclusive report from ABC's John Scally after the Vietnam strategy meetings in Honolulu. Scally says the step is being taken because the Central Intelligence Agency worked perhaps too closely with the deposed ZM regime. Important elections in Japan, but no surprises. The report from Ray Falk, ABC Tokyo. Japan's conservative liberal Democrats have won a clear majority in the national diet elections and thus remain in charge of the government for the next four years. The conservatives did a little worse than predicted. The left, a little better than expected. The election was the dullest in Japan's recent history with a record low of only 60% voting in Tokyo. There will be no changes in the government's pro-Western and cautious China policy. But Prime Minister Kidder will have a tougher time within his own party. Ray Falk, ABC, Tokyo. With just a few scattered no votes, the Ecumenical Council today approved its first completed schema, voting overwhelming endorsement for the replacement of Latin by modern languages in much of Roman Catholic worship. ABC on hand at Columbia University last night in New York as former President Eisenhower spoke of the necessity for spiritual strength if a nation is to be great. And then Mr. Eisenhower talked about the place of religion or prayer in schools. We have a Supreme Court decision that in our great public system, we can make no mention in, of religion, or at least uh, we cannot utter certain prayers. If for no other reason the privately endowed and supported institution of education deserves our support, it would be because you are not so hampered and restricted. And former President Eisenhower was awarded the Alexander Hamilton Medal at Columbia. At Uvalde, Texas, birthday number 95 for John Nance Garner, a vice president under FDR. Now, a message from our sponsor. Hey, Tim, I got my card. Give you a lift home? Swell. I'm tired. 
had a nagging backache lately. That can get you down. And with the sleepless nights that go with it, I feel dragged out. Last year, my dad was bothered by backache, but he found grand relief. Maybe you could, too. How? Try Doan's pills. Good advice. That's Doan's pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. For convenience, buy Doan's large size. This is news around the world. Back to Don Gardner after a pause for station identification. This is 570 WBAP in Fort Worth. Radio Refine. The time, 721. And there are more reports from Berlin, Moscow, Washington, Houston, New York City, and ABC microphones and reporters were on the scene to catch the voices of people making news as news around the world continues. There's now some doubt as to who will fill the foreign aid vacuum in Cambodia following Prince Sihanouk's renunciation of the dollar stream from Washington. It had been thought the Cambodian leader would ask Red China and Russia to fill the gap, but Sihanouk last night termed communist aid particularly dangerous and hinted that he may turn now to France. A search for the missing U-2 pilot continues even as the Navy plans to raise the wreckage of his plane from the Gulf of Mexico. There has still been no official announcement of the plane's mission, presumed to have been reconnaissance over Cuba. The wreckage of the U-2 was located in a hundred feet of water yesterday in the Gulf near Key West, Florida. The Soviet Union has answered the American protest regarding the incidents on the Autobahn. A report now from Ben Lacey, ABC, Berlin. The Allied garrisons here emphatically reject the Russian version of what happened on the Berlin Autobahn early this month. Officials declared again that the American, British, and French convoys did not dismount, and they were cleared on their terms. American officials vigorously deny the Soviet claim that the United States convoy tried to change clearance procedures, but gave up when it wouldn't work. Authorities say the Russian statement that the British and French convoys cleared without conflict is correct, because the Soviets did not choose to detain these two movements when they refused to dismount. Ben Lacey, ABC, Berlin. Now, the case for the Soviets spelled out last night by Radio Moscow. The foreign ministry knew that if the United States were not interested in causing incidents like the one at the Marienborn control post, it had only to issue the appropriate instructions to its military representatives without allowing situations to arise when any irresponsible American officer could provoke dangerous incidents. The Soviet Union expects the United States to take steps to end the regrettable deportment of its military personnel. The way Radio Moscow sees it, it's all our fault. The investigation into the affairs of Bobby Baker, the former secretary to the Democratic majority in the Senate, continues, and we get the latest from Pete Clapper, ABC, Washington. The Bobby Baker case continues to titillate Washington probably a good deal more than the rest of the country. Today's big news is that the former Senate Majority Secretary apparently remains unworried. He's said to be sore at news stories about him, but cocksure he won't be nabbed for tax evasion. He's quoted as saying that when things unravel, he'll be okay. The unraveling, however, proceeds uncommonly slowly. Today, the Senate probe of conflict of interest charges against Baker will follow up new leads provided yesterday by Mrs. Trudy Novak. She testified privately about financial deals involving her late husband and Baker. Pete Clapper, ABC, Washington. And that's the report from Capitol Hill on news around the world. Drive out today, Arlington Way, for a ten-minute trip down the Arlington Strip. A thousand cars in half a mile. And a silver wheel deal that's really worthwhile. Arlington, 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 Arlington Auto Isle. Have you seen the whole new car lineup for 1964? Now is the time to take a short drive out Arlington Way where you can view and compare all the new cars at the easy-to-shop Arlington Auto Isle. Not only can you save money with an exclusive silver wheel deal, but you can compare the features of the 1964 models without wandering from dealership to distant dealership. Over a thousand cars from which to choose. 
Drive out today to Bob Cook Ford, Luke Pontiac Rambler, Nowell Dodge Renault, Vandergriff Buick, Vandergriff Chevrolet, and Butts Oldsmobile Cadillac. Arlington, 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 Ottawa, Iowa. At 25 minutes past 7, back to news around the world. A President Kennedy's predecessor, Dwight D. Eisenhower, at Columbia University last night, spoke of American leadership. Our nation, to be the leader, they must be, must be spiritually strong, or it will never have, in the long run, a great and expanding economy and the necessary military strength until the world has led been been led into paths of peace. And in Washington, General Eisenhower's Republican colleague, Indiana Congressman Charles Halleck, also had some comment on American leadership. During the 1960 presidential campaign, Mr. Kennedy filled the airwaves with what he called, quote, the need for strong leadership, the need to go forward with vigor. If we examine President Kennedy's handling of his legislative programs for his first three years, his 1960 campaign cries are more applicable today than three years ago. And speaking with Congressman Halleck, Illinois Senator Everett Dirksen. In the final analysis, it is President Kennedy's own mismanagement of his legislative program that has kept Congress in session since last January, and everybody in Washington knows it. The Republican Senator from Illinois, Everett Dirksen. A plan to enter Wisconsin Republican Congressman John Burns as a favorite son candidate apparently has gone by the boards despite Burns' impassioned defense yesterday of his stock holdings in a Wisconsin mortgage company. Congressman Burns obtained favorable tax treatment for the company. The probable Republican candidate for Wisconsin governor and a Wisconsin Republican national committeeman both say Burns is now likely to forego the favorite son role at next year's presidential convention. An accident on an American firing range in South Korea has claimed the lives of nine Koreans, injured nine others. A U.S. artillery unit fired an Honest John missile onto the range. Despite warnings, the Koreans ran out to collect scrap from the first warhead, and when a second Honest John burst among them, that's when the casualties happened. An historic communications link with Japan. That story now from Al Mann, ABC, in the Mojave Desert in California. Today, a new era of communications opens between North America and Asia with the transmission of the first direct television pictures from the United States to Japan by way of the relay satellite. Today's transmission will be one way only, from the United States. A special message from President Kennedy to the Japanese people will be the feature part of the program. Not only will the picture span the Pacific, but it'll span time as well, crossing the international dateline to be seen live in Japan on Saturday morning Live in the United States on Friday afternoon. Al Mann, ABC, the Mojave Desert, California. A series of rifle shots brought death to five members of one family early this morning in Truman, Arkansas. Police report that farmer Sammy Penter, apparently despondent, turned his gun on four members of his family, then killed himself. The shooting at Truman, Arkansas, took place at a birthday celebration for Penter's six-year-old stepdaughter. She was one of the victims. A lawyer for teams to President Jimmy Hoffa says Hoffa had no knowledge of an attempt to bribe a prospective juror for Hoffa's trial. The disclaimer from Nashville attorney Z.T. Osborne, who was disbarred by a Nashville federal court for his alleged part in a jury fix attempt. The nation's weather, a study in contrast this morning. The north central states shivering under near zero temperatures. Snow has fallen in the belt from Montana to Nebraska. Meanwhile, the rest of the nation fairly basks in unseasonably warm temperatures. Early morning readings already in the 60s from the southwest as far north as Chicago. That's the latest on the weather on news around the world. The wheat deal with the Soviets coming in for more criticism. This from Texas Republican Senator John Tower. He's against the deal, thinks the administration is keeping the truth about the deal from the American people. Says Senator Tower. It might be too hard to accuse this administration of deliberately attempting to hoodwink the American people. But there can be no doubt that they have adopted an attitude of what they don't know won't hurt them. And the longer the people stay in the dark about what's going on in Washington, the longer they, the administration that is, can stay in power. Disagreeing with Senator Tower, the Democratic senator from Arkansas, William Fulbright. It is clear that our virtual embargo on non-strategic trade with communist countries has become self-defeating. It does not deny the communist countries the goods 
which they wish to buy, but only assures that they will buy them from sources other than the United States. Senator William Fulbright, chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on the Wheat Deal. That's the morning wrap-up on news around the world. This is Don Gardner, ABC News, New York. Goodbye, and I hope you have a good day. It's 19 minutes to 8, and from Hotel Texas, here is Frank Mills with a 570 Mike Side Report. Good morning, everyone. For a few hours that began about eight hours ago, Fort Worth is the capital of the United States of America. It's a singular occasion, for at the same time we have with us today the President and the Vice President of the United States. In the dark hours before dawn, the sky was lighted by the golden glow of the outline of the skyline of the city of Fort Worth, reflecting the warmth of the welcome for the President and the First Lady. Here in the hotel there's an air of expectancy, almost a festival, party-like air. Almost all of the 2,000 guests have been seated. Most all of them already have been served. It has been going off just like clockwork this morning. We are located some 40 or 50 feet from the kitchen through which the president and his party will make their entrance. Why the kitchen? Well, security reasons for one thing. Another, it is a most the direct route from the elevators to the ballroom and thence to the speaker's table. We arrived at 6 o'clock this morning and already people were here gathering in the dark and in the rain from every vantage point that they, uh, or from where they could find a dry spot at least, to view the president. And of course as the dry spots were taken up, uh, then the people uh, took to standing very patiently and quietly in the rain, uh, awaiting the time when they could see the president. Of course the uh, kitchen force was here in force this morning, and I am sure long before we arrived, uh, some very quick, uh, simple arithmetic something over 2,000 people to be served, and if they're going to have uh, uh, two eggs apiece, this is some 4,000 eggs that had to be broken and scrambled. And uh, if we can project this a little further, I would imagine some uh, 400 pounds of ham and over 200 gallons of coffee. So if you've been upset about uh, making plans or overseeing a wedding reception or the club's annual Christmas party, you'll know what the force has been faced with here this morning. So the people are still assembling outside uh, for the public appearance the president will make in the parking lot directly across the street from the specially erected platform there. Because regardless of political persuasion, people are gathering for a real-life glimpse of the president of the United States. As one man said to me this morning as I walked among the crowd out there, uh, after all, he is the president, and I got here early so I could get close enough to perhaps say, good morning, Mr. President, and welcome to Fort Worth. Uh, at various times during the morning, we will be interrupting the regular program schedule to bring you feature reports here from the Grand Ballroom. And uh, also, of course, as the uh, festivities, if we can call them that, and this is, the, this is the air about the place, as they begin at approximately 8.45, that is the time the President is scheduled to address the people outside, uh, we will bring you in its entirety the program here from the Grand Ballroom. So for the time being, this is Frank Mills returning you now to the studio. 570 WBAP Fort Worth. Get behind the wheel of a Campbell Oldsmobile at Bob Campbell's Western Olds. You get the finest deal on a fine automobile at Bob Campbell's Western Oldsmobile. Spirited and sportier than ever for 64. That's the all-new F-85 Cutlass by Oldsmobile, loaded with action. With just a flip of the wrist, you'll ease the optional jetaway transmission into position for instant response. Yes, this is where the action is, the all-new F-85 Cutlass. Inside, there's sports car dash, foam padded bucket seats, and an optional center control console. And there are three models to choose from, new holiday coupe, sports coupe, and sassy convertible. That's F-85 Cutlass. Bob Campbell's Western Olds, where the action is for 64. So get behind the wheel of a Campbell Oldsmobile. Go to Bob Campbell's Western Olds. Back to the news. President Kennedy has scheduled three major speeches in Texas today at Fort Worth, Dallas, and Austin. 
The president and his wife spent the night at Hotel Texas after getting a warm welcome from crowds in three cities yesterday. They were cheered by thousands in Fort Worth last night when they arrived from Houston and San Antonio. In addition to an address at a Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce breakfast this morning, the president has scheduled a public appearance downtown shortly before 9 a.m. Jack Brown reports. President Kennedy's parking lot speech is still 50 minutes away, but several hundred persons have already gathered to hear him. They're wearing raincoats and holding umbrellas, but the rain has stopped. Inside in the Grand Ballroom, some 2,000 persons are in their seats for Mr. Kennedy's second speech. That will begin around 9.10. The breakfast menu calls for eggs, 4,200 of them, Virginia ham, 65 big ones, 700 pounds of potatoes, 80 pounds of coffee, 72 gallons of orange juice, and an undetermined number of Parker House rolls. There's still no word on the subject of President Kennedy's breakfast speech. At the present time, Jimmy Revito's combo is providing background music. The crowd is still coming in. People are being seated by the ushers, which includes TCU football coach Abe Martin. The head table is decked out with sprays of flowers, uh, gladiolas, carnations, and something I can't recognize from here. Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy spent the night in Suite 850, a suite that has been outfitted with artwork from the French school, which Mrs. Kennedy prefers. The suite's gold carpet has been cleaned half a dozen times in the last few days. Every time they get it clean, cameramen plead for a few more pictures, and in getting them, they track dirt and mud on the carpet. Six young co-eds from Carter Riverside High School apparently were among the first to show up this morning. They stationed themselves outside the hotel at 5 o'clock. After Mr. Kennedy's breakfast speech, he will motorcade to Carswell Air Force Base, where Air Force One will fly him over to Love Field in Dallas. This is Jack Brown reporting from the Grand Ballroom of the Hotel Texas. The motorcade returning the presidential party to Carswell Air Force Base is scheduled to leave downtown Fort Worth at 10.30 with departure for Dallas at 11.15 a.m. The president will address a luncheon in Dallas, then go to Austin for a major speech tonight at a party fundraising dinner. Another Dallas visit is former Vice President Nixon, who's on a business trip for his New York law firm. He's made plans to leave Dallas this morning prior to President Kennedy's arrival. Nixon predicted Thursday that President Kennedy will discard Vice President Johnson as a running mate next year if the race looks close. In St. Louis, Republican National Chairman William Miller predicts there will be no draft candidate at next summer's GOP convention. He says that party presidential hopefuls will have to work for the nomination. He says anyone who just sits by expecting to be drafted is in for a disappointment. A birthday party for a six-year-old girl ended in horror last night in a modest frame home near Truman, Arkansas. Authorities say that a 34-year-old drink-crazed farmer, apparently beset with family troubles, shot four persons to death and then took his own life. Police say Sammy Penter killed his wife, his mother-in-law, his sister-in-law, and his six-year-old stepdaughter before shooting himself. A bedraggled Russian diplomat, not even wearing shoes, arrived in Brussels this morning after being expelled from the Congo. Several hours later, the Russian, Boris Voronin, was hustled aboard a Soviet plane bound for Moscow. The fate of the other Soviet diplomat picked up on subversion charges in the Congo is not known. The Congolese premier has ordered the entire Soviet diplomatic mission expelled from Leopoldville. The 570 Weathercast, presented by the Union Bank of Fort Worth. In Dallas, cloudy. The relative humidity is 90%. The wind south at 5 miles per hour. Barometer stands at 29.83 steady. It's 55 degrees at Fort Worth, cloudy with a light rain. Humidity 86. The wind south-southeast 9 miles per hour. Barometer falling from 29.82. The present temperature 53 degrees. Time of the tone... 8.30 from Broadcast Hill, WBAP, 570, Fort Worth. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Man Show. Gino Bannon here with Mostly Music, of course. Uh, the President of the United States will speak at 9 a.m. from the Hotel Texas in Fort Worth on WBAP, 820 in Fort Worth. And uh, just a few moments from now, we'll be joining the festivities with Frank Mills and Nick Ramsey and David Daniels. So stand by. It's 21 minutes before 9, and from Hotel Texas, here is Frank Mills with an 820 Mike Side Report. And we, with uh, some 2,000 or more other people, are still 
awaiting the arrival of the president, who in approximately six minutes, if plans hold up, will be speaking to the crowd outside, rain or no rain, in the parking lot directly across the street from the south entrance to the Texas Hotel. He'll be speaking from a specially erected platform there. Uh, political observers, you know, are saying that uh, the president's appearance in Texas this time will be observed as a weather vane uh, for the 1964 campaign. If that is so, the president can appoint to his abilities as a rainmaker, and if he can sell that idea, he ought to gain a lot of support, because if there's one thing that all of Texas has agreed upon, it is that we do need rain. We've had it a couple of days ago, we have it today, and there is an outside chance, at least, that they might break up long enough uh, for him to make a dry appearance out there in the parking lot, but if, uh, if it doesn't, then it will be a wet one, according to plans. Uh, things should clear pretty well by the time of his arrival in Dallas this afternoon, and better than a 50-50 chance that uh, festivities, the parade, etc., there will be conducted without showers. But the showers will begin to form again. The instability will still be with us, and uh, probably the rain will follow the president on down to Austin. Well, as I mentioned earlier uh, this morning, the uh, Nick Ramsey, who was with us here at our WBAP microphones today, has uh, been circulating through the crowd uh, with the wire rec or tape recorder. That shows you how long I've been doing this. Uh, the tape recorder, uh, getting interviews with people. And here are some interesting uh, comments that he recorded about an hour or two ago. Let's talk to a lady here at the Presidential Breakfast in Hotel Texas. Your name, please. Mrs. Edward Moore. Where are you from, Ms. Moore? I'm from Fort Worth. You're from Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, did you uh, get up uh, early this morning, uh, earlier than usual? I got up at 5 o'clock, first time I've set the alarm in years. I see. <laughs> what, uh, what brings you to the breakfast primarily? Is it to see the president, or is it the charm of the first lady? Uh, what will? Uh, what is the the most uh, attractive element of the uh, presidential the most, breakfast? The most important thing is to see the president, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then to see Mrs. Kennedy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think she's lovely, but I think our president does come first. I see. She's a lovely person. Well, you look well. like you're happy to be here. Very happy. Mm, that's good. Let's talk to another lady here. What is your name, please? Mrs. Bob Cartwright. And where are you from, Mrs. Cartwright? Fort Worth. Fort Worth. Well, we re were well represented this morning. Yes. What is the particular attraction here for you? Well, I agree with the first lady there that our president is most important. Mm -hmm. And I I'm sure you're looking forward to a good breakfast. Oh, yes. After staying here this long. <laughs> How long have you been here this uh, morning? Since 6.15. Since 6.15 you've yes. been here in, in the hotel? Yes. Well, it looks like everyone got up early. I remember when I came in at 6 o'clock, there were a group of youngsters who had been standing at the front of the hotel since about 3 o'clock. And so it, it seems that uh, the President and the First Lady and their being in Fort Worth and in Dallas appeals to a lot of people. Yes, I'm sure. Let's talk to this gentleman here. Is this uh, Mr. Cartwright? Yes. All right, sir. Bob Cartwright. Yes, sir. And I know you've, uh, you look like you've been looking forward to the breakfast. Well, You're one of the fortunate 2,000, I believe. <laughs> yes, uh, but I waked up at 2.30 and couldn't go back to sleep, so th this is a rough day. I see. Is it, uh, do you uh, like the idea that the president is visiting our town? Oh, uh, yes, I do. I think it's... How do you feel at Fort Worth? He will be impressed by Fort Worth as a, as a city. Well, I, I think Fort Worth has really turned out for him. I think the... Uh, uh, the business houses turning on the lights last night, the, the work that the Chamber of Commerce has done is, is uh, going to make a very lasting impression, I hope, on the President and also the Vice President. Well, uh, that's Mr. Mr. Cartwright, yes. uh, and his, uh, his idea is uh, concerning how Fort Worth has turned out to welcome the President. And uh, I know that you're glad to be at the breakfast. Thank you so much, both you and Mrs. Cartwright, for talking with Thank us. Thank you. Let's talk to this gentleman here. Your name, sir? Uh, John Herrick. Mr. Herrick, um, you're up bright and early this morning. Is it your usual um, uh, procedure to get up early in the morning? Not quite this early, but I, I really feel that, that history will recognize this man as being one of the greatest presidents we've had. Mm -hmm. And so I do not want to lose the opportunity just because of a few hours sleep to see him. <laughs> I see. I see. I've heard some talk that this is a non-political trip. Uh, do you believe that that um, um, evaluation holds as of this moment? Well, I think so, because I think regardless of party, 
uh, a sense of excitement has been going through Fort Worth uh, for the last four or five days. And the fact that our president is here is, uh, I think, enough to say that it is a non-political trip. All right, sir. Thank you very much for talking with us. And we'll be talking with some other people here at the Hotel Texas presidential breakfast uh, throughout the morning. Some of the 2,000 who uh, will be at the breakfast itself. This is Nick Ramsey returning you to the studio. This is David Daniel just outside Hotel Texas on the parking lot awaiting the arrival of President Kennedy for his outside speech at 845. A police captain has estimated the crowd at 2,000 people. They're about 50 deep forming an arch behind wooden barricades and forming a semicircle. An announcement was just made that President Kennedy, along with Vice President Johnson, Senator Yarbrough, and Representative Jim Wright would be here in just a moment and urge the crowd to bear with us. And that was the result, an outburst by the crowd. And here is the President. <laughs> President Kennedy is uh, flanked by Representative Jim Wright. You hear the crowd applaud him. He's making his way across 8th Street. And now Representative Jim Wright. Our friends, this is the proudest day in the history of Fort Worth and Tarrant County. Before, before I present our highly honored guests, let me briefly introduce those of our home folks who have helped make this event possible. The distinguished president of the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce, Raymond E. Buck. The state executive committee woman from Tarrant County, Mrs. David O. Ballou, Jr. Our energetic Able State Senator Don Kennard. May I present to you the senior senator from the state of Texas, the Honorable Ralph W. Yarbrough. And one who hardly needs an introduction, Fort Worth's own distinguished governor of Texas, John B. Connolly. And now it is my high honor and great privilege to present to you the greatest Texan of them all who has reflected more glory and credit upon the Lone Star State, done more good for the Lone Star State, served the nation more admirably than any other Texan in the history of our state, the Vice President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. Congressman Wright, Mr. President, Senator Yarber, Governor Connolly, ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor and my great privilege to present to the good people of Fort Worth our able, our beloved, our fearless leader of the United States and all the free world, the President of the United States. Mr. Vice President. Jim Wright, Governor, Senator Yarbrough, Mr. Buck, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there are no faint hearts in Fort Worth, and I appreciate, I appreciate your being here this morning. I, Mrs. Kennedy is organizing herself, it takes longer, but of course she looks better than we do when she does it. But we appreciate your welcome. This city's been a great western city. The defense of the west, cattle, oil, and all the rest. It has believed in strength in this city, and strength in this state, and strength in this country. What we're trying to do in this country and what we're trying to do around the world, I believe, is quite simple. 
and that is to build a military structure which will defend the vital interests of the United States. And in that great cause, Fort Worth, as it did in World War II, as it did in developing the best bomber system in the world, the B-58, and as it will now do in developing the best fighter system in the world, the TFX, Fort Worth will play its proper part. And that is why we have placed so much emphasis in the last three years in building a defense system second to none. Until now, the United States is stronger than it's ever been in its history. And secondly, we believe that the new environment, space, the new sea, is also an area where the United States should be second to none. And this state of Texas and the United States is now engaged in the most concentrated effort in history to provide leadership in this area as it must here on Earth. And this is our second great effort. And next December, next month, the United States will fire the largest booster in the history of the world, putting us ahead of the Soviet Union in that area for the first time in our history. And thirdly, thirdly, for the United States to fulfill its obligations around the world requires that the United States move forward economically, that the people of this country participate in rising prosperity. And it is a fact in 1962 and the first six months of 1963, the economy of the United States grew not only faster than nearly every Western country, which had not been true in the 50s, but also grew faster than the Soviet Union itself. That's the kind of strength the United States needs economically, in space, militarily. And in the final analysis, that strength depends upon the willingness of the citizens of the United States to assume the burdens of leadership. I know one place where they are. Here in this rain, in Fort Worth, in Texas, in the United States, we're going forward. Thank you. The President now takes his... Thank you for being here. The President and Mrs. Kennedy will begin the motorcade here uh, after the Chamber of Commerce breakfast is over. Thank you so much. Well, the representative Jim Mark now the president makes his way to greet some more of the crowd walking around the barricades, touching the hands of those around the barricade. This is the crowd as they shake hands with President Kennedy. He's making his way through the crowd. We have a long microphone which is about 14 inches long. It looks sort of like a long pistol. Secret Service agent approach distances just don't put that in front of the President. The president is weeding his way slowly through the crowd as many more crowd around him trying to reach out, stretch out, touch his hand. Many have cameras trying to take pictures. This is David Daniel on the lot of parking lot of Hotel Texas now, returning you to the studio. Now the president has decided to go shake the hand of the sheriff's posse rider. W.L.W. Radio 
show, the home of Cincinnati Royals basketball, and this is Ed Kennedy, your play-by-play commentator, inviting you to join us tonight on this station for the NBA game between the Royals and the Detroit Pistons. Charlie Wolf, now coaching the Pistons, will be bringing in a squad of All-Americans, led by Bailey Howell. We'll be at the mic and hope you'll be at your radio tuned to WLW. Time is 8.30 tonight on WLW Radio Cincinnati. It's now 10 o'clock a.m., NBC Radio, News on the Hour, brought to you by Bayer Aspirin for fast relief from headache, muscular pains, or fever of a cold. Now here is Russ Ward, NBC News. President Kennedy, in his second day of speechmaking in Texas, is defending the TFX warplane as a powerful force of freedom. We'll have a report from Texas coming up. South Vietnam's Revolutionary Council has dismissed 31 high-ranking military officers for an indefinite period while investigations are made into their activities during the ZM regime. French officials are quoted today as saying the de Gaulle government would give sympathetic consideration to economic and military aid for Cambodia. Cambodian Prince Norodom Sihanouk reportedly has said France is the most capable power to represent the Western world in that part of Asia. There has been no official request for help, however. Nine South Koreans have been killed and nine others injured as they were gathering scrap metal on a U.S. firing range north of Seoul. The victims died when an Honest John rocket landed in the area. An Army spokesman said the South Koreans had been warned of danger on the firing range, that they were trespassing when the tragedy occurred. By a margin of more than 100 to 1, delegates to the Roman Catholic Ecumenical Council have given final approval to the use of modern languages instead of Latin in most forms of church worship. This is the first definitive action by the Council. That report on the President and other news after this from Bayer Aspirin. Did you know that the average American has three or more colds a year? If you should come down with the pains or fever of a cold or flu during this cold and flu season, remember this, to feel better fast, Bayer Aspirin is the kind of pain reliever doctors recommend. Reporting on a government finance study of five leading pain relievers, an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association showed that Bayer Aspirin was unsurpassed by any of them for speed and strength of relief. The report also showed that Bayer Aspirin was as gentle to the stomach as any product tested, including the higher-priced buffered product. On the other hand, the two combination of ingredients products tested upset the stomach considerably more often. So for fast, strong relief from the pains and fever of a cold or flu, and especially if certain combination of ingredients products upset your stomach, try Bayer Aspirin. For your youngsters, get Bayer Aspirin for children with its new orange flavor. Here again, Russ Ward. President Kennedy has opened the second day of his political swing through Texas. The story from NBC's Robert McNeil with the presidential party in Fort Worth. President Kennedy is beginning the day with a defense of the controversial TFX fighter plane. He's telling a breakfast audience in Fort Worth right now that there's been a good deal of discussion of the competition to win the TFX contract, but relatively little discussion of what this revolutionary plane will do. The president has also just spoken to a crowd of several thousand standing outside in the rain. He's now preparing to move on to Dallas for a major lunchtime speech on the theme of American strength. Police in Dallas have mounted the biggest security operation in their history to prevent any repetition of the demonstrations which marked the visit of U.N. Ambassador Adlai Stevenson last month. Although Texas newspapers are much preoccupied with Democratic Party feuding behind the glamour of the occasion, it has not detracted from the Kennedy's popular success. Robert McNeil, NBC News, with the presidential party in Fort Worth. French President de Gaulle and West Germany's new Chancellor Erhard have ended two days of talks in Paris with a reaffirmation of the French-West German Treaty of Cooperation signed last January. The two men called for, quote, all necessary efforts to solve the problems of the European common market. No progress was reported on questions of nuclear defense for Western Europe. Today, incidentally, is the 73rd birthday of President de Gaulle. He has asked that there be no public ceremony. Another birthday of note, John Nance Garner, 95 today. He's being honored in his hometown of Uvalde, Texas, with a farm and ranch show. Russ Ward, NBC News, Washington. Now's a good time to see your Chevrolet dealer and ask about a smile mile. He's proudly displaying five entirely different kinds of exciting new cars for 64. Corvair, Corvette, Chevy 2, Chevelle, and Chevrolet. And don't forget to ask about the Chevrolet Songbook. 
with the words to more than a hundred of the great old favorites. Come in soon. Ask your Chevrolet dealer about the Chevrolet songbook and ask about a smile mile. This has been NBC News on the Hour. Listen again on the hour for NBC Radio News brought to you by Chevrolet. For Chevrolet dealers everywhere. James Daly is one of Monitor's weekend hosts on the NBC Radio Network. Total information news from WBAP Fort Worth. Norwood McClendon reporting. President Kennedy drew prolonged applause in Fort Worth this morning when he said this country next month will fire the largest rocket booster in the world, putting us ahead of the Soviet Union in space. Later, President Kennedy told a Fort Worth breakfast audience that Texas ranks fifth among the states in prime military contract spending. He also spoke well of the TFX fighter plane contracted to General Dynamics Fort Worth. From Fort Worth, the President and Mrs. Kennedy and their party go to Dallas where the Chief Executive addresses a luncheon gathering. Tonight they'll be in Austin. The Kennedys will meet the people again in the downtown Fort Worth, back to Carswell Motorcade, as they proceed up Main to Belknap, west to Jacksboro Highway, then to River Oaks Boulevard, and on to the air base. The party is scheduled to leave for Dallas at 11.15. Your straight line to reliable reporting, WBAP Fort Worth, where the news comes first. A big city has been told to be on its good behavior today, and we're it. From Dallas Love Field, the Dallas-Fort Worth area broadcasters bring you a special description of the arrival of President John F. Kennedy. At this moment, three special jetliners are supposed to be in the air between Dallas and Fort Worth. They were scheduled to take off a few moments ago from Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth for the brief flight to Dallas. Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy and their official party began their Texas tour yesterday morning when they departed Washington... From there, they have visited Houston, San Antonio, then on to Fort Worth, where they spent last night. If time allows, we'll bring you up to date on their stops at uh, those three previous points. But right now, the eyes of Texas and the nation are focused on Dallas. The president's car is being delayed momentarily. We can't see from here exactly what is holding it up. He, uh, yes, we can, too. He has now decided to shake hands with one or two more people, and that is the cause for the delay. But this is the moment where the Secret Service has its point of tension, as we have talked with many of these Secret Service men in the past few days who have arranged for the President's security. They say, when the President stops moving, that's when we're concerned, because that is when the possibility of trouble comes to the forefront. And here comes the President now. In fact, he's not in his limousine. He's departed the limousine, and he is walking. He is reaching across the fence, shaking hands, shaking hands with many of the people who have come here to see him. He is closely accompanied by Dallas police officers and, of course, the Secret Service. But Mr. Kennedy stepped out of the automobile. He is now shaking hands. Mrs. Kennedy is right behind him, and they are walking along the line of the fence, shaking hands with some of the hundreds of people who have come here to view their arrival. Now, this is a distinct departure from the plan that had been set forth many, many days ago. And now, here's Mrs. Uh, Lyndon Johnson. She also is going along. So is the vice president. They're making their way along the line of the fence and uh, still are not in the official limousine. The only members of the official party in the presidential limousine who didn't depart are Governor and Mrs. Connolly. They have stayed in the limousine. But the president, the first lady, the vice president, and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson all are walking along the edge of this fence, shaking hands with the crowd. And they are being greeted by placards of varying emotion and uh, political feeling. Those saying, we're with you all the way, JFK, and those saying, help JFK stamp out democracy. So he is seeing Dallas County politics at the height of a very boiling moment in Dallas political history. 
thousands of children now swarming, trying to get over the fence, the Dallas police trying to keep them back, and the security is tense at this time, but is going beautifully. Vice President and Mrs. Johnson are, oh, some 25 to 30 feet behind the President and the First Lady in the handshaking tour, the unofficial, unscheduled handshaking tour. And now, the President and First Lady are retreating from the fence. They're heading now for the official limousine where Governor Connolly stands, waiting their arrival so that they can make their way downtown and out to the trademark. But this was one of those impromptu moments for which President Kennedy is so well known. So many times you have heard that the Secret Service men suddenly find themselves without the president, that suddenly he has left them and stepped into the crowd, the milling throng, and decided to shake hands and give his personal greetings. And this, once again, he did. So you could say perhaps that this is more the norm now than the unexpected because it has been done so many times. And there's... The gunmetal gray limousine, blue and gray, pulling away now from the fenced area. The President and Mrs. Kennedy seated on the back seat. Governor and Mrs. Connolly on the second seats or jump seats. And then the official driver and Secret Service men are in the front seat. And uh, immediately behind them, another car swarming with the Secret Service. Car making its way through the rain puddles left by this early morning rain. And all of the other vehicles in the official motorcade are now falling into line. And the trip to downtown Dallas and the trademark is underway. Another group of spectators lining a parking lot area. The presidential car has slowed down so that they may see and that he may wave to them. But now the motorcycle escort, a flying wedge of some one dozen Dallas police motorcycles leading the way, and the pace is picking up as they head for the departure gate and the trip downtown to the trademark. This has been a special broadcast of the arrival of the official presidential party. President and Mrs. Kennedy, Vice President and Mrs. Lyndon Johnson, and other members of the official party as they arrive in Dallas today where they will attend the luncheon and the president will make an address. They will depart here at 2.30 for Bergstrom Air Force Base at Austin. Then it will be overnight guests at the LBJ Ranch. And then they will unofficially, our schedule says, they will depart at noon tomorrow for Washington. So the party is now leaving Dallas Love Field and the spectators are scrambling. It looks like bargain day right after Christmas as thousands of people dash madly to get another view of the president as he and his first lady depart Love Field. The special broadcast, a full effort on the part of the Dallas-Fort Worth area broadcasters. We have been speaking from atop a huge broadcasting van where we hope we've given you somewhat of a word picture of what has occurred here today. And now we return you to your local studios from Dallas Love Field. The speech of President Kennedy at the Dallas Trademark will be broadcast by 570 Radio. Stay tuned for the President's Dallas speech at the Trademark on 570 Radio. This is WBAP 570 Fort Worth. Our time now, six minutes before 12 noon. A new date set for disarmament negotiations. The 17 nations taking part in the disarmament discussions have decided to try again in Geneva beginning January 21st. President Kennedy keeping a date. He's now in Dallas, Texas. That's an area where there are a lot of supporters of Arizona conservative Republican Senator Barry Goldwater. Mr. Kennedy expected to take a few pot shots at Senator Goldwater's stand that American field commanders be given authority to use nuclear weapons. Earlier today in Fort Worth, the president spoke to a breakfast meeting of the Chamber of Commerce. He praised the military hardware that Texas plants turn out. And then ABC microphones picked up this reference to a new plane to be built by General Dynamics in Fort Worth. There's been a good deal of discussion of the long and hard fought competition to win the TFX contract. There's very little discussion about what this plane will do. Then the president went on to praise the TFX as a plane that will serve all our military forces and give the free world an aircraft no other on earth can match. Mr. Kennedy made no reference to the congressional hassle over the award of the contract to General Dynamics instead of Boeing Aircraft's cheaper version. 
One man who won't be in Dallas when the president arrives, former president, uh, vice president Richard Nixon. Nixon there on a business trip. He left this morning. Nixon said he thinks the 64 Democratic ticket may dump Vice President Johnson if the going gets rough. There's another bit of hoopla going on in Texas today. In Uvalde, John Nance Garner is celebrating his 95th birthday. Axis Jack was vice president during FDR's first two terms. A little while ago, ABC telephoned the Garner Ranch. We talked with a member of the Garner household, Ray Scott. We asked Scott about Mr. Garner. He's pretty happy. He's having a good time. The president just called, and he's welcoming to Texas. They talked about two or three minutes. And he had about 100 people come to see him. And the band was out, out in the front yard playing. High school band. And he's in happy spirit. Has a big cake and everything. Keep it raining present. And our best wishes to John Nance Garner. That Alabama grand jury coming to Washington will get a chance to look around the Justice Department, but neither Attorney General Kennedy nor any other department official will appear for questioning. The Alabama jury is attempting to question the Justice Department about the use of an automobile to take the Reverend Martin Luther King to a civil rights rally. of the two most glorious holidays of the year is coming. So it won't be long before you make a most important meat purchase. Yes, Thanksgiving is only days away. And this happy holiday will be just a little better this year if a little forethought goes into the purchase of the traditional turkey. Naturally, you want a turkey that gives you extra meat per pound. And if you're like most families, you'll want a turkey that offers more of the moist, sweet, absolutely delicious white meat per pound. There are turkeys that meet these requirements. You'll find them at your grocer's bearing the famous Armour Star. Yes, ma'am, I'm talking about Armour Star broad-breasted turkeys, government inspected and graded to assure your family a very special treat this Thanksgiving. Armour Star turkeys have moderately long, deep, well-rounded breasts with extra white meat, plenty of dark meat, too. When you shop at your grocer's for that Thanksgiving turkey, get an Armour Star broad-breasted turkey, government inspected and graded to assure you of the very best. Armour Star our best by far. Well, three minutes now before 12 o'clock. That's KLIF making whoopee time. We've got 63 degrees right now. And portable TV, Sylvania brings you the exciting new trend for 1964. With exclusive power screen chassis that brings you crisper, brighter, sharper pictures than you've ever seen before. Circuitry so new it's patented. A new trend in viewing convenience. A curtain timer clock that turns your favorite programs on and off automatically. Sylvania also gives you a bonded shield picture tube in every TV. Out front sound. New sculptured cabinetry with up to the minute styling. Also new from Sylvania, Dynamic America console TV. With bonded shield picture tube, the power screen chassis, beautifully styled cabinetry, and all at prices that will convince you that Sylvania is your best TV buy. During Sylvania's fall celebration seal, you'll find 19 inch TV sets starting as low as $129.95. And when you visit your Sylvania dealer, be sure to register for the free portable 19 inch Sylvania TV or one of the many clock or table model radios to be given away. You expect more total contact news on KLIF, and you get it. A service to Dallas of your neighborhood thrifty food store. Dallas. It was a late date for President Kennedy this morning as he got away from Fort Worth ten minutes late. The chief executive spoke to a Fort Worth breakfast before he in plane for Big Day. The official greeting party, including Mayor Earl Cabell, Judge Lou Starrett, Eric Johnson, and others, were on hand to welcome Mr. Kennedy at the field. Air Force plane number one, the president's plane, arrived at 11.38 a.m., just three minutes overdue. On his his non-political tour, Mr. Kennedy and his motorcade left Love Field to travel along Lemon Avenue to Turtle Creek to Cedar Springs to Harwood to Maine, then to Stemmons and the Trademark for lunch. During his speech in Fort Worth, Mr. Kennedy said in 1964, the U.S. would test a booster so powerful that this nation would leave Russia far behind in the space race. As if Mother Nature was watching the president's arrival, the sun beamed down on Love Field as the president arrived. This was a portion of Mr. Kennedy's speech as he addressed the Fort Worth breakfast. Defense payroll is well over a billion dollars. 
I don't recite these for any partisan purpose. They're the result of American determination to be second to none. President Kennedy commenting on the nation's defense effort in the part that Texas plays. Fort Worth, Governor John Connolly commented today on the chilly relationship between him and U.S. Senator Ralph Yarborough of Texas, saying with a chuckle that most believe the rift is deeper than it really is. Connolly said at a news conference in Fort Worth that he had not even discussed the matter with President Kennedy because, as he put it, I didn't think it was important enough. Amarillo. Twin coal fronts are moving through Texas, setting off scattered rainfall and promising lower temperatures over the state. One front is moving in from the west, the other from the northwest. A squall line moving ahead of the fronts poured a half inch of rain on Henderson in East Texas in just 15 minutes. Temperatures plunged 10 degrees and winds gusted to 55 miles an hour. The winds knocked down a few tree limbs but otherwise caused no damage. <laughs> your hat, folks, and hurry to your Thrifty Food Store. It's Thrifty's Big Del Monte Dollar Day Sale with Red Hot Specials for Thanksgiving. Famous Del Monte Pineapple Juice or Pineapple Grapefruit Drink for exactly one. Never too tart and never too sweet. Big 46-ounce can, three for a dollar. Another Thrifty Special Del Monte Corn with that sweeter flavor. Enjoy rich roasting ear goodness. Your choice of family style or old kernel. Number 303 can, six for one dollar. More Thrifty Scoop Del Monte Early Garden Peas. Tempting, tender Del Monte Peas chocolate full of early garden goodness. Number 303 can, five for a dollar, and that's not all. Del Monte Fruit Cocktail, luscious hand-picked Del Monte fruits combining juicy peaches, pears, grapes, pineapple, and bright red cherries. Number 303 can, five for a dollar. Now during the Del Monte Dollar Day Sale at your thrifty food store. Shop and your home own at your home owned thrifty food store. <laughs> Dallas weather, mostly cloudy and cooler this afternoon. Partly cloudy and colder tonight. Fair Saturday, high both days, 62, low tonight, 38. Current conditions, the barometric pressure study at 29.87. Wind is out of the west, southwest at 15 miles per hour. About this humidity, 65%. KLA, a temperature of 63 degrees. Since now, the 12 noon, priority one headline. President Kennedy arrives at Love Field as about 2,000 Dallas nights greet him. This edition of KLA of News has been brought to you by Thrifty Food Stores. Gary DeLon speaking. This is Bob Upker again at Main and Ackert in downtown Dallas. And the first red lights are now visible coming uh, far down the street, uh, just having now turned right hand uh, onto Main off of Harwood. And the uh, large uh, police escort is now ahead of the presidential uh, motorcade. Buses are pulled over to the side of the street, and the crowd is surging forward to uh, close in somewhat on the leading cars. There are five, six, seven motorcycles still here in front of the first cars, uh, and the crowd at our point is surging forward. There's a big cheer going up as the uh, president gets further down, and now the ticker tape uh, and uh, other confetti and such is beginning to flow from the windows uh, all over the uh, large uh, buildings here and uh, engulf the entire uh, motorcade. Here comes the first car with Police Chief Jess Curry and uh, Sheriff Bill Decker. And here is the President of the United States. And what a crowd, uh, what a tremendous welcome he's getting now. We can, uh, and there's Jackie. She's getting just as big a welcome. And the crowd is absolutely going wild. This is a friendly crowd in downtown Dallas as the President and the First Lady pass by. There is Linda Johnson and Lady Bird passing by in the second car behind Moore. And here come the Congressmen in their automobiles. And there comes the press. They're shooting the entire crowd as they move along here. Here is KRLD's cameraman Jim Underwood along with others and more press people coming by. As we can see, the presidential limousine even further down the street. It's a tremendous welcome, not a placard in downtown Dallas. And here comes the White House press. Uh, the big chartered uh, bus is now arriving. And uh, more limousines. The entire motorcade is now being, as we can see, the rear of it. It's uh, the crowd's closing in behind the motorcade. And up ahead of the motorcade, far down uh, the street towards Simmons Freeway, well, you can see the crowd is absolutely going wild, and there's more ticker tape falling out of the, the windows. There are people absolutely uh, looking from every window here in downtown Dallas, and it was a wonderful welcome as the president and Jacqueline Kennedy uh, passed our point at uh, Main and Ackert. The latter part of the motorcade has just passed, and now the entire Main Street is completely filled from building to building with people and they're following the motorcade uh, down towards Dillon Freeway. The people really enjoyed that one glimpse of the President of the United States and Jacqueline Kennedy. They're going further down and just about now, as we can see, far, far down uh, Main Street towards Simmons Freeway. The motorcade is just about to reach the uh, location of the county courthouse. 
and the people are still running down Main Street following the presidential motorcade. The enthusiastic welcome that uh, broke loose here at Main and Akron has followed the president all the way through, and thousands and thousands of people who were crowding the streets here are following the motorcade even further down uh, Main Street towards Simmons Freeway. It uh, was a wonderful welcome for President Kennedy and Mrs. Kennedy. There was uh, certainly uh, no adverse demonstration. It was a tremendous welcome that Big D gave our chief executive. The presidential motorcade is now just uh, far, far uh, out, almost out of our sight, and the only thing still visible above the heads of uh, thousands upon thousands of people who are still following the motorcade down Main Street towards Simmons Freeway, just the very top of the big buses carrying the official party and the congressman as well as the White House press. It was a tremendous welcome here in Main and Ackard and all along Main Street in downtown Dallas. And now gradually the crowd is uh, beginning to thin out at our location and uh, we can see a little bit of traffic beginning to move uh, far down to the east on Main Street. And those who are following the presidential caravan are just about out of sight now too and most of the crowd at our point are going back to their respective jobs and wherever they have to be on this particular afternoon. This is the nation station, WLW, in Cincinnati, your clear channel service. Eastern Standard Time, 1.30. NBC Radio News on the Hour, brought to you by Winds Friction Proving Products to correct and prevent car trouble from radiator to gas tank. Now here is Martin Nagronsky, NBC News. President Kennedy denounced critics of his foreign policy today as prone to confuse rhetoric with reality. On the second day of his Texas tour, the president used a Dallas speech to contend that those who advance seemingly swift and simple solutions to every world problem will end in endangering the nation's security. Though the president didn't mention Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater by name, there was no doubt his remarks were aimed at the man who is now regarded as the front-runner for the Republican presidential nomination. Acting Commerce Secretary Franklin D. Roosevelt, Jr. has testified to the Senate Banking Committee that the U.S. will have to hurry its decision on selling surplus wheat to the Soviet Union as the Russians have now set a May 21st deadline for beginning the shipments. Roosevelt argued against the proposal of South Dakota Senator Munt to bar government-sponsored credit for wheat purchases by any communist nation. He contended this restriction would bar U.S. businessmen from getting a fair chance to win a part of Russia's annual $4 billion of trade with the free world. At the United Nations in New York, the 17 member states of the presently postponed Geneva Disarmament Conference voted to resume negotiations at Geneva next January 21st. And more news after this from Winds of Friction Proofing. Carefree driving begins with a can of wind and a can of wind. Today. Did it happen this morning? Did you step on the gas and finally realize that the pep and zing your car used to have is gone? Sort of takes the joy out of driving, doesn't it? Well, there's a very good answer to your problem. It's called Winds Friction Proofing. Winds Friction Proofing restores a healthy measure of the pep your car has lost with age. It increases power and gas mileage, makes starting easier on cold mornings. But best of all, winds friction proofing penetrates the surfaces of the moving parts inside your engine. It smooths and seals these parts to hold engine wear to an absolute minimum. Next time you stop for gas or service, add a can of winds friction proofing to your crankcase. Your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. So add a can of winds today. Here again, Martin Nagronsky. A two-day conference between West Germany's Chancellor Erhard and France's President de Gaulle has ended, and a report from NBC's Bernard Frizzell in Paris. West German Chancellor Ludwig Erhard made plain here today the German government's reliance upon the United States for its defense against the threat of Soviet aggression. That was the note on which Erhard wound up his two-day visit here to President de Gaulle. The French were reportedly careful not to present to Erhardt a choice between themselves and the United States. But the Germans were said to be astonished at the sharply critical attitude of the French toward American policy. A joint communique called for all necessary efforts to get the common market moving forward again and to increase trade with the United States through the forthcoming Kennedy round of negotiations for tariff reduction. 
but no concrete agreements were announced. This is Bernard Frizzell, NBC News, Paris. Democratic Senator George McGovern of South Dakota, home state of the Fisher Quintuplets, has a letter from a constituent that he finds hard to answer. The constituent writes that he doesn't mind a bit all the gifts to the Fisher family, but that he feels he's being unfairly treated despite his similar circumstances. I've got five children, too, he complains to Senator McGovern, and just because mine came one at a time, no one has given me a cent. Michigan's Governor George Romney insisted today at the Midwest Governor's Conference in Omaha that he is not seeking the Republican presidential nomination next year. This is Martin Agronsky, NBC News, Washington. When your child is sick with a cold or flu, remember what doctors recommend. Bed rest, plenty of fluids, and aspirin to reduce fever and relieve pain. When you give orange-flavored bear aspirin for children, your child will feel better fast. And knowing he feels better, so will you. Each tablet is the one and a quarter grain dosage doctors recommend for children. And it gives you such confidence to know you're giving the best. So always, orange-flavored bear aspirin for children. This has been NBC News on the Hour. Listen again on the Hour for NBC Radio News brought to you by Bear Aspirin for Children. Emphasis adds to your listening enjoyment weekdays on the NBC Radio Network. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Friday, November 22nd. Welcome to the Tune Pipe. Bernard and Little Abner here until 3 o'clock. It uh, would appear to be another one of those gray and overcast days with some rain falling around the tri-state area. Cloudy skies to continue with the showers off and on again, that type of day. Be a little windy this afternoon, too, with highs in the upper 60s. While we're at it, we'll get right to the forecast. Present temperature is 58 here in Cincinnati, and the relative humidity at 85%. Uh, Indianapolis has rain in 58. Dayton has rain, 65 there. Columbus, 65. Louisville, 68. Lexington, 69. Huntington, 69 degrees, and they're all reporting cloudy skies. Leading edge of the rain is showing on the radar from near Toledo to Dayton to Andersonville, Indiana to mid midway between Louisville and Evansville. Now you have it all in your mind. This place is the eastern edge about 40 miles west of Cincinnati. The rain is spreading eastward 15 to 20 miles an hour. We may have a few sprinkles in advance of the main rain area, which falls mainly on the plain, but that's next week. This week, Little Abner. WLW is the only station permitted by the Federal Communications Commission to broadcast on 700 kilocycles in this country by international agreement. It's the responsibility of WLW to provide service to many thousands of people who live either in rural communities or on farms or in towns not large enough to support its own local radio station. For many years now, WLW has attempted to meet its responsibilities and obligations to provide this service. Its management, farm department, and staff earnestly solicit your suggestions as to how our service might be improved, either in the field of entertainment, news, or information that's important to you. Your comments and suggestions will certainly be appreciated. They'll receive the careful and thoughtful consideration of all of us here at the nation's station. We ask that you address them to Steve Crane, General Manager, WLW in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now to Dog Patch USA. And before we get the proceedings underway, we'll have to stand by here just a moment. There may be something happening. Yes, there is. There's a bulletin just handed me from Dallas, Texas. An unknown sniper fired three shots at President Kennedy. This is uh, in connection with President Kennedy, who is now touring Texas, as you know. Uh, I'll tell you exactly how this reads. Dallas, an unknown sniper fired three shots at, and then there are five letters, P-M-O-U-X, then a flash... Kennedy's name is misspelled. Flash again, and at the bottom of this headline it says, Kennedy, seriously wounded. 
We will, of course, be awaiting further details on this story, so please stand by. This report just in from Dallas, Texas, an unknown sniper firing three shots, evidently, at the presidential party while they were touring Texas. At the bottom of this, it says, Mr. Kennedy has been seriously wounded. We will, of course, bring you details as they are received. This is Edwin Newman in the NBC newsroom in New York. This information from Dallas. President Kennedy was given the last holy rites of the Roman Catholic Church today. That was, of course, after he was shot down by a would-be assassin while he was riding in a caravan through downtown Dallas. A Catholic priest who helped perform the last rites said he did not believe the president was dead. The Catholic priest, in other words, said he believed the president was still alive. The priest left the emergency operating room at Parkland Hospital where the president is lying and walked out of the hospital. We hear from Washington that Attorney General Robert Kennedy and the president's younger brother, youngest brother, Senator Edward Kennedy, are on their way to Andrews Air Force Base to catch a plane for Dallas. Also in Washington, the director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, has, of course, instructed the Dallas office of the FBI to make an all-out investigation of the attempt on the life of President Kennedy and of Governor John Connolly of Texas. Governor Connolly was shot in the back below the shoulder blade. Here is a flash from Dallas. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds suffered in the assassination attempt today. I repeat... A flash from Dallas. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he is dead of bullet wounds. This is the latest information we have from Dallas. We are, of course, standing by to give you all available information as it comes to us. I will repeat with the greatest regret this flash. Two priests who were with President Kennedy say he has died of bullet wounds.